Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of plotting tutorials using MyPlotLab in Python. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at polar scatter plots. Now, in one of the earlier tutorials, I have talked about uh, polar plots wherein we just draw uh, plot, just plain lines on the uh, polar, polar diagrams. Now in this example, I will be talking about how you can actually do a scatter plot in a polar, uh, polar coordinates. And that this is actually as uh, much easier than one might actually think about it. So let's get started with. So as usual, I import numpy and my plot live files over here. I set the value n to be 100 and what. And using this, I'm just setting up my angle. Angle is actually linearly spaced between 0 and 4 pi. And here, resin matter it can be 2 pi 2, so that's it's not going to be a big deal. And now what I said do is I said curve one. Curve one is actually uh, has values that are linearly spaced between 0 and 1. And there are like 101 points in between them. So we'll get a we'll get a nice uh, we'll get a nice spiral out out, out of this curve. Um, ignore what's happening in the background. It's actually raining and there's a bit of a thunderstorm going on. You know, it's not a thunderstorm. It's a lot of thun it's thundering activities going on outside. So just ignore that. Um, anyway, proceeding further. Uh, in the curve two, ha curve two is actually an addition of curve one plus a little bit of a random noise. So the random noise to get a little bit of um, you know how do you call it? a scatter. To get a scatter like feature coming up and then curve 3 is just a uh, pure uh, random numbers okay so just to uh, before we draw the uh, scatter plot let's actually make the subplot a little better so what i do is i uh, create an axis handle for the sub axis handle with the subplot 111 so and that i set this to be true i set the polar option to be true there we get a polar plot and then at the bottom i set up the limits I mean the radius limits so I set the minimum radius for the subplot to be 0 and the maximum to be 1.5 and then I set the ticks for the radius uh, radius so I'm setting the ticks to be between 0 and 1.5 there will be four ticks so you will be lot ticks such as 0 um, 0 0.5 1 and 1.5 and I set the radius label position at 135 degrees angle and then the angle ticks I'm placing them to be between 0 and uh, 2 pi and I'm going to keep 17 of them so it will have angles between 0 and 360 something over here and then at the here I just have the grid legend and title and then I show the plot so these are the main tweaks so if I run this I just get an empty I just get an empty sc polar scatter I'm just getting an empty polar plot like this so this works fine uh, we have uh, everything set up ready and now um, now we actually look at plot the data first before we plot the data let's actually plot curve one so which is actually x one dot pl plot and when i plot this uh, plot the curve one with theta okay i'm just giving a label being called as mean and the car i'm setting this to be a color uh sal salmon color from xkcd colors library uh, there we go i get a nice spiral over here which is quite obvious and anticipated this is quite obvious and uh, anticipated fair enough and now what I'm going to do is uh, to uh, now in, uh, just like how we draw this particular line over here, we we'll draw this plot of plot over here. The scatter option is exactly the same. You just type ax1 dot scatter, and then you plot theta, and then the curve, and then you instead of color, there's no color over here, so you just put c. C is the color label, and then put that to be black. I'm just setting this to be black, and the la label I gave it to be deviation. So when I run this so when I run this clearly you can see uh, clearly you can see there are uh, it's actually a pattern coming up over here and it's actually diverging diverging out to make it make this a little better if I, if I uh, include the plot as well you can clearly see these two are over overlapping properly so these dots are these dots are now uh, from this diagram i can clearly see that these dots are actually little bit of a random noise on top of this already existing uh, already existing red curve so this comes out properly the the question the uh, thing to be concerned about not concerned about here thing to have the main main uh, attention is the scatter plot over here here just to make a scatter plot easy just put theta the value and set up a color and deviation and that will give you all the ba uh, the basic bare minimum requirements of a scatter plot and let's say you have multiple scatter plots let's say after this you just put another scatter plot and proceed further and you can give another color for instance let me put this to be uh, let me put this over here and uh, instead of curve um, um, let's see 
let me add something like 0.5 to it to everyone and instead of uh, k let me put this to be g so that's the green color and i put this to be standard deviation one and this to be standard deviation two i mean just deviation two and when i run this clearly you can clearly you can see i have two different scatter two different scatters over here and depending upon the pattern i can actually increase i can actually uh, make uh, have multiple pa multiple scatters on the same polar plot okay uh, suppose if i have multiple uh, three to four scatters i just have to use a uh, different colors and i can actually have multiple scatters in the same plot without without any uh, without any problem and the legend itself will take will make sure that we are they are separated and identified properly okay and now the last part of this video is where is when um, let's it's about the customization of the scatter plot so for this i'm using this example curve 3 so let me comment let me uncomment all this and walk you through as usual you need theta and then the data and here the c option helps you to put a color so c option helps you to put a color and then you have this uh, s option over here that will give you the marker size so for now i'm just going to comment out this particular line and this particular line and uh, i'm going to uncomment this line so this scatter plot will uh, scatter the curve 3 with respect to theta and this will have a label scatter the color of these po po points will be yellow and uh, alpha will make sure alpha 0.75 will make sure that the, co the, I mean the colors are 25 percent transparent so or 75 percent opaque and the edge color is actually black so uh, you will have circle you have the scatter plot you have a scatter plot uh, but the edges of those uh, curves will be black uh, black in color so if i run this here here we go we have a proper scatter over here and all the we have a proper scatter over here and each of these scatters have a black edge color a black edge color and the inner colors are actually yellow and it's light it's actually a faint yellow that's why you, that's why you're able to see what's actually behind if you were to if i were to look at this closely you're able to see that there are some colors there are some markers behind because of the transparency okay now why are these um, plots actually be bigger in size uh, bigger in size as they go out is because of this area so if you want to set the size of the markers you said you uh, set them using this s option over here this actually says the size of the markers and when i put this to be 400 times uh, absolute value of curve 3 what happens is that if the curve if the magnitude of, magnitude of any particular value in curve is higher the marker corresponding to it will have a higher uh, marker marker size okay so if i if i uncomment this I mean, if I comment this out now, if I run this, all the scatters have the same area. All the scatters have the same area, and if I un if I uncomment this, the scatters will have a larger area. Okay, cool. And now, instead of having a single monochromatic color like this, I can have multiple colors as as follows. I all I have to do is the instead of the single color argument that we passed earlier, we just put uh, we just pass some kind of uh, um, an array which will map which will map to the colors okay and we also pass a similar uh, size array so that we have something we have something to uh, give to mention about the sizes to map the sizes and what do you do finally you just put a color map and here i'm using this hsv color map over here so when i run this this plot is complete in the sense the plot is <coughs> complete in the sense uh we have the we have the scatter we have the colors and uh, we have the colors and where the areas are inc increasing proportionately as proportionately as we go away and away from the uh, away and away from the origin this way we have a control over the area control over the data the si data the marker sizes the marker colors and so on and so forth and uh, likewise instead of hsv i can actually put this to jet and uh, i can get i can get a rainbow color yeah and i can get a rainbow color plot rainbow color plot like this or i can put what you call a seismic and to get a uh, red red to uh, a white blue plot like this one scattered like this one this way i can actually change my col colors as per my convenience now that's all i have for you all in this scatter plot tutorial in a polar scatter plot tutorial thank you for watching hope you all got clarified with all this and hope this uh, is very useful to you all i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care